Hi everyone and welcome back. I'm Ida Jogeli and today we're going to be building my desktop which is going to be a monster editing PC. Let's start by doing an outside of the box build. Motherboard of choice. There you go. So this is the cooler and this is the processor. This, this is the processor. And that's why this comes. This is a cooler. It looks like a monster. We have the thermal paste in there. Now we're gonna install the processor onto the motherboard. You're gonna first identify the corner with a little triangle on the processor. And then you're gonna identify the triangle on the motherboard and then align them so that the triangle is on the triangle. Flip out the retention arms, which is holding this down. Just push it to the side. This flings up and then you don't want to touch anything that's inside there without touching any of the gold parts on the bottom. Hold the processor on the sides where it was aligned and then you drop it in with no force. You don't want any of the dirt to be in here. Close this down. And I don't know why this plastic... Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay. And this plastic cover has popped out. And we keep this for later use. The next step is that we're going to install the Cooler Master. It's to remove the fan and we do that by unclipping these four clips on the side. Find these screws, put all four of them. Tighten it, that's good. Next one, tighten. Now we're gonna put the cooler. This cooler has these tubes inside here. To pass it through, we gotta close it. Pass it through inside. And then open it up. You see, open it up. We're gonna take the thermal paste. Oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot, I made a mess. How did Linus do it so easily? I'm just gonna take off. I'm gonna align this, all four of them. I'm gonna put in the RAM. I put this in here. So this is a screw that works for the LGA 1000 series, but you notice that this one is slightly longer, while that the one I put inside here is slightly shorter. If you have the LGA 2011 version, then you want to put the smaller screw in these four locations. I tried out using the bigger screw. I bolted these down and I found that I could still move and slide around the Cooler Master heatsink. So, same thing as before. Uh-oh, but this is like moving. This thing can still twist. I was actually using the wrong screws. When putting these screws on with the smaller screw, you gotta make sure to be patient and screw in diagonally these two and then go diagonally to these ones. And just slowly rotate uh, an even amount on each one of them until you place them all in. I thought the shorter one wasn't enough reach, but it worked just fine and now the Cooler Master doesn't slide around. All right, so now I can put in the fan. So it has four little hooks. Clip it onto this indention. Okay guys, after about four hours my time, I finally got the heatsink on and the CPU on the motherboard. So that's awesome. Once you have this on, you'll want to connect it to your... There's lots of pins around. The one that says CPU fan, that's where it goes. This is a really big case. On this Corsair 750 Airflow case, there are two little screws on the side. Now this lets us open the back panel. I realized that this case has two openings one on the back and one on the front. You want to take out both panels in order to have access. The back panel allows you to do good cable management. That is to hide your cables away and make it just look beautiful. So let's open up the back. These are the screws for the back panel. There you go. I really like how light the panels are. I believe other cases are much more heavier than this one. And that's one of the reasons why I picked this one, because the walls aren't like super thick. The first thing we're going to do 
is fine. This back panel right here, there is a slot and it should be applied with just pressure. There you go. All four corners are clipped. My case brought this box. So I'm gonna take this out. I can lift this out. You can actually take out each item in here by holding these clips and then sliding it out. I didn't have to take off this whole thing. So now I'm gonna take my very heavy motherboard and align these USB plugs. And then I wanna align it with the screws. I can visibly see that these screw holes are matching with the case. There's 10 screws that come with this airflow case. Right now, I'm gonna be doing cable management. This case has various plugs. For instance, over here, it has a power button, it has a headphone jack, a microphone jack, and I need to route those cables from the case. Also, the fans have their own cables to the motherboard. I'm following the instructions from both the case and the motherboard. I found the USB 3.0 cable, and I found the location here on the motherboard, so I'm gonna connect that. Okay, that snapped in. Now we find the USB 2.0 cable. We found the cable that says USB. That will go here onto one of either slots, USB 1.1.1.2 or USB 1.3.1.4. Now I'll be connecting the HD audio cable to the front panel audio connector. Just located around here. It is called the AAFP. Audio is connected. Next cable is the power SW cable, which goes into power on button slots located. Looks like the motherboard also has its own power button and reset button to turn the whole computer on, but I want to connect the button that's on the case. Next, we will take the power SW cable and connect it to the system panel connector. We'll put it to the one that is for system power. Next, we'll connect the reset, this one, reset SW also to the system panel connector. Now we find the HDD LED cable. We want to connect that also to the system panel connector. Lastly, we'll connect the power positive LED and power negative LED cables. That seems good. I just did some cable management using these metal wires. I used them to wrap these cables together and make them look a lot neater. The next thing I'm going to do is connect the fans. This uh, chassis has one, two, three fans and they each have their own little cable. One fan cable, second fan cable, the third fan cable. We want to connect these to the motherboard, all these three cables. Let's see where it is. The fan connectors to the motherboard is located all over the place. Chassis fan 3, chassis fan 4 over here, chassis fan 1, chassis fan 2 over here. So I'm just going to connect them depending on how close they are. All the fans are connected. Every connector from the case to the motherboard is connected. Now I'm going to be setting up the power supply into the desktop. Now the power supply I'm using is a Supernova 850G2. Let's unbox this baby. Look at this. What do I need this? Okay, for all my tools in the future. I don't know. And there are a lot, a lot of cables here. <laughs> Let's take this off. Manual. This is our power supply. Wow, this is so cool. This part is for the electricity cable and that goes outside of the chassis. This is the fan. We want this to be on the bottom of the chassis because in the bottom I actually have a slot where air can flow out. This case even brought this uh, filter to keep dust from coming in. We're gonna lay this inside here, four of them. Hard drive number one. Hard drive number two of the Samsung. That's <laughs> super light. Compare this monster to this super light and fast and small card. Isn't that awesome? And not this. No connectors on this side, connectors on this side. My hard disk doesn't align with the screw holes 
and it's pretty sturdy in here already so I'm not gonna put screws into this one there right through here I'm gonna also need to power this other cable through here now that I've connected the two hard drives I connected the power routing it through the back so that you can't see it in the front that goes to the supply and then I routed the data from the hard disk to the motherboard me being a first timer it's taken me six hours at this point this is a serial ATX 24 pin cable it powers the motherboard I'm going to connect this from the power supply to the motherboard right here we can move into the video card. I'm excited because this is one of the main reasons I got a desktop. It's for the video card. We are about to witness the unboxing of the GTX 970 gaming video card. For years I have dreamed about this moment when I would build my own PC. And now it is happening. See my friend, dreams do come true. The weapon to your own game. This video card actually came with a free game. It's a Tom Clancy game. <laughs> oh my god, this is beautiful. Okay, inside here you'll find a cable, a CD, I guess the drivers. Although the latest drivers are usually online. A user's guide and an adapter. Man, this video card is so, so cool. Dope, man. I love the color red and black. Now this is what you call a video card. This is legit. Wow. It has two fans to avoid overheating. Oh man, this is beautiful. Remove before gaming. <laughs> and we'll be putting this inside there. I'll turn up the screws. I'm going to take out another slot for the Wi-Fi card. Gigabyte Wi-Fi Bluetooth card. This little baby that kind of connector take this off now we're gonna put in our little wi-fi bluetooth card which goes like this now we're gonna power the video card using one of these bga cables the back panel onto the power supply 